Patients who are depressed may be admitted to any unit of the hospital. Nurses may meet such patients in mother baby units, oncology units, rehabilitation units, or in an inpatient hospice setting. Each, each person's depression is personal and one of skills required by the nurse to establish rapport. Nurses who use therapeutic communication with patients in any setting are able to establish mutual goals that facilitate reaching patient outcomes. In this scene, notice the eye contact, the body posture, and the posture of the nurse. Especially in an acute care hospital, nurses frequently care for patients who, for a variety of reasons, are lying supine in bed. Note that the nurse takes the time to sit down and talk with a patient. Nurses who work within mental health setting more often have the opportunity to actually sit down and talk with a patient. However, in any setting, two or three minutes of sitting down to talk with a patient demonstrates that the nurse is dedicated to making the patient feel comfortable by establishing eye contact at a comfortable level. Sitting down also demonstrates that the nurse is paying full attention. Patients may volunteer information more freely when they feel the nurse has taken the time to learn their personal story. This nurse demonstrates attributes of active listening. Rather than continuing to ask questions, the nurse considers the statements of the patient and responds with ideas that are related to the patient's personal situation. Pay attention to the patient. What signs and symptoms of depression does this patient display? Notice that the nurse does not provide false hope for an immediate change in mood, but instead gives realistic expectations. The nurse also gives the patient written information about the medication. Hi Johnny, what brings you to the hospital today? I really don't know what to do about it. I have no energy, no friends, nothing but my children. My neighbor found me on my porch crying and I wouldn't stop crying. She brought me to the hospital. Tell me about your kids. They seem important to you. I have three kids. Adam, age five, Jennifer, ten. Claire, she's eight. They're traumatized because their father left me. The five-year-old can't sleep through the night. And when I go comfort him, I can't get back to sleep. Sorry, you feel so exhausted. Can you tell me how long you felt this way? Adam's sleeping problems have been going on for like three weeks, but I don't know. I've, I've felt tired for the past three months. I don't know why. What else is going on with your feelings? Um, I feel like I have no friends, no future. I'm, I'm trying to get my degree so I can go to law school, but who knows if that'll ever happen. Seems like you feel pretty overwhelmed. Do you feel like that every day? Yeah. I'd stay in bed every day if it wasn't for the kids. I have to get them ready for school. And I've stopped exercising and been gaining weight even though I, I don't eat very often. What kind of courses are you taking in college? I 
I'm so worried. I can't concentrate on my homework or study for my tests. There's one political science course about U.S. government that is essential for the admission that I need to go to law school, but I... U.S. government, that sounds interesting, but demanding. Maybe there's someone that can watch the kids once a week so you have time to study. I don't want to bother any of my friends with my kids. And I, I don't want it to seem like I can't take care of them. Is there child care at your school? I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it. Our goal here is to make you feel more in control of your life so that you can better take care of yourself as well as your children. I have a short questionnaire for you to complete and then I'll consult with the doctor. How this questionnaire show that I'm crazy? No. The questionnaire is to measure your level of depression. Being depressed is not being crazy. I'm glad that your friend brought you here, and I want you to know that few people spend more than one or two days at the hospital. Hi, Johnny. The psychiatrist has recommended an antidepressant. It's called Prozac. Will that help me sleep? Most people find it takes at least 20 days to see some of the benefits, but it varies with each person. And if you're taking St. John's wort or any other herbal preparations, you'll want to stop taking those at the same time as this. I guess I'm just going to have to work harder to get Adam to sleep throughout the night if I want to get any sleep. I know I should go take him to see a child therapist. Do you have a counselor in mind? Yeah. I just... haven't picked up the phone and made an appointment. I don't want him to feel different. You think he'll feel different in what way? I doubt any of his other friends have to go see a counselor. I don't want him to look weak. What kinds of things does he talk about with his friends? I mostly just play ball outside or watch TV shows. And that's what they talk about. Recess at school, TV shows. Well, maybe you can have a talk with the counselor beforehand. It's common practice to have a parent meeting so you can voice any concerns. And I can honestly say I've never heard a child talk about going to the therapist. They prefer to be active. Now that you put it that way, I think I overemphasized it in my mind. What are some things on your wish list for yourself? Do you have any ideas on how you could start getting a little more activity each day? Suppose I could try something. I, I don't do anything else. What are some things you like to do? Well, I used to like to take walks in the park. That was before the divorce. I park makes me sad now. Maybe you could walk at a different park. I hope that if you walk for about 30 minutes each day for the next two weeks, the combination of exercise and the medication will help you get some sleep. <laughs> Flynn, please. Do you think it'll really help? I hope the child therapist helps Adam with his sleeping problems. It's just one more reminder that I can't do anything right. You're taking steps to help that. Besides, your other two children seem to be doing very well. 
in the next two weeks with increased exercise and the medication, you should find yourself with more energy and the ability to cope with your problems. All right. I'll be back in about 30 minutes to remind you to head to the cafeteria, and after that there is a group meeting I think you'll find very beneficial. After viewing the nurse-patient discussion, consider the following questions. Number one, how would the nurse respond to a young adult woman if she was despondent about a diagnosis of chronic or possibly terminal disease? Number two, in this situation with a young adult, how should the nurse approach an elderly patient? Number three, families and cultures have different expectations about eye contact and personal space. How does the nurse make an assessment to accommodate these differences? Number four, persons experiencing depression have little or no energy. This often limits their ability to express their feelings. The nurse may may be met with the response, I don't know. How should a nurse respond to a patient who replies, I don't know? What should a nurse say when a patient asks, will this test show if I'm crazy or not? Number six, how did this nurse-patient interaction compare with your own experience in caring for a patient with depression? What other assessment will will need to be made to establish individualized care for this patient. Working with patients with anxiety. Working with patients with severe anxiety is challenging. In the following situation, the patient is able to carry on a conversation in spite of their pacing. 